Hello everybody and welcome once again to Galactic Science 2. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to do a little bit of a tutorial on compact machines. Now they're going to be really useful. Now the reason for compact machines is they create a new dimension. And then you can put machines or basically processes into that dimension and just use it like a block. It's really quite an awesome mod. Um, and also, while I'm going to do that, I'm going to demonstrate it with a little bit of crafting from uh, A2. So let's go and do that first of all. What I've got in here, so let's go on. Basically, what I want to do is to set up one of these. Just, these are the items you've got from uh, this mod. There's not that many items from the compact machines. Basically, you've got different rooms of different sizes, going up from 3x3 three three to... 15 by 15 I think or 13 by 13 that one's a bit on the expensive side because it's using eight nether stars this one's not too bad it's uh, diamonds this should be obsidian and this one should be gold and that will be iron and the last one will be wood like that and in the middle here you've got this world resizing cube so what we're going to do is set up a crafting recipe for the world resizing cube like this so basically, I shift click this, so then it'll bring everything in. That's it at the moment, it's processing recipes, and what we want is, to re is a crafting recipe. So we take that out of here like that, and put that in there. So now I've got all of the bits and pieces I need, I think. What I've also got in here is a, move that out of the way, because that was the, that's the pattern terminal. This is the ME interface terminal, and this one basically allows you to, um, find it put your interfaces in without having to actually be there and do it so let's have a look at molecular assemblers here you see we've got I think we've got about 14 of them so it should tell me how many I've got actually at the top yeah, I've got 14 molecular assemblers and here are the recipes that I've just done for the um, for the compact machines so I've got four recipes for that now so let's go now to and actually put those down. Now what you can do with compact machines, I also want a wand. And I think any of these will do. This is an empty wand. This is a monster spawner. Must be, so I want an empty wand. Basically I'm finding these empty ones in, uh, in dungeon chests. And if I look at my um, waypoints, I find quite a few dungeons around, as you can see. I think that was the same as this one, so same distance. But I'm, I'll post the location of the dungeons in the description of the of the, fit, of the video. So I thought I'd actually clear enough three of those off. Uh, right. So what with this these compact machines? What you have to do? Let's put one of these rooms down. So I've got one room here, which was basically just diamonds around that resizing here, and then you can go inside it. But you can't go inside it with just right clicking. You have to use this personal shrinking device. Now this is expensive in this mod pack. I don't know why it's so expensive because it does. This is a, something you should be using right from the beginning of your base, and not from like a tier three thing. Because this is a steel machine hole, and those are seriously expensive. It's also seriously expensive in terms of power on this one. It's only what 1.6 billion RF to make one of these things. But it's fairly straightforward anyway once you've done it. We've done steel holes before, so I'm not going to go through that process again. So now, when you look at this thing, it shows you you've got south, and it's a new machine, upgraded no. Because so I've just put it down. This is the same thing, west, up, east, and north. So we can go inside it, we can simply right click with this uh, tool, the shrinking device, and we go inside. And we're now in a new dimension, as you can see. This, I think, is 11 by 11. So we can put some stuff down. Let's just put some stuff down. Let's put down a chest. And let's put down a uh, molecular assembler. Okay. Now I'm going to go out of here. Right click the device here. And we come outside. I'm going to break it. So I shift right click on this one. No, shift left click it. It breaks. But you'll notice that I got the chest back and I got the molecular assembler back. So it didn't stay together. So if you want it to stay together, what you do is you come along here, you put it down, you go inside it, 
with a personal shrinking device again if I find it but we don't need everything I've got here in my hot bar do I like that and this time we'll put stuff down now this is our north face I think I want to put this down on the east face here so what I'm going to do is put down the molecular assembler in the middle something like this and then on the east side of that I'm going to put down an ME interface now in these ME interfaces I'm going to put some items so let's put these items in here these coding patterns basically made in exactly the same way as I made the this one the world resizing cube I'm going to actually put the real world resizing cube in the other interface like this and I'll show you why in a minute I'm also going to put onto these a storage bus so let's get a storage bus out of here I've got plenty as you can see 47 like that so let me use storage bus and I've got the glass cable in my hand what we can do is we can actually connect this here on each face you have this interface so basically right click it into oh, I can reach so we can go down here now we're connected up in fact actually I'll remove this interface from here I don't want it on there shift right click with the with the wrench and put it on this face here it's probably just as good and then I can connect that up like that and then I can reach this one now I think now it says compact machine interface disabled I'm going to set it to auto I'm not exactly sure which one I need and then I connect it up you can still access it of course so it's still auto and then these two these two things are connected up here it's got no power at the moment because we're not doing anything with them but let's go outside now remembering this is the east face okay now we can pick this if I break this now I'll get all everything back again but if I put it into the wand like this an empty wand it picks it up so we can go downstairs with this now and we can put this down somewhere and I think if I'm not mistaken if I put it down say here and then we it's down now I think this is the this is the west face and this if we go over here it will be the east face fantastic this rendering's really slow at the moment this is why these compact machines are going to be so good because it the rendering doesn't have we don't have this problem with the rendering once it's done so now I can come along here and I can have a look in here and I can type molecular assembler and you'll see now I've got 16 and you can see the items I put in and the other one are actually here so let's craft one of these uh, world resizing cubes so let's craft one of these you see it's actually made six of these so I've got one of those now the reason for that is these are always stored now what I can do with this let's go back into that thing and I also want some more yeah I'll come to that in a minute I think let's go back to the downstairs like that and come back into this machine over here and let's go into that and on this one with the storage interface here and it's raining oh by the way I'm in here I can take my oxygen off I don't need any oxygen because we're, we're in a sort of uh, an oxygen environment so we don't need to worry about that but it also rains <laughs> which is really funny <laughs> anyway right so in here I can right click this now and I can put into it one of these here into the storage ones and it's not going to craft it yet if I put it down like this I'm going to use this one and then put a crafting card in here it's automatically going to craft one of these like that it's automatically We've crafted it and come in and it's stored here so I've always got one zero world resizing cube available and these two are also these three are also automatically crafted now in here it's a good idea to make sure that you've got your pattern in a different uh, ME interface than where you're storing it because if you don't have some things there's a bit buggy and things go wrong let's put my oxygen back in the oxygen mask back on again so you can actually spend a long time in here preparing this stuff up here 
on the other face here what I'm going to do is another demonstration you're not limited to just um, a you know, you've got all sorts of different things with this mod so let's do it on the west face here and let's put into this some fluid conduits I haven't got enough so I'll have to craft some of those up as well so let's put it down say that here I've got run out but I'm going to put two tanks down here like that I think yeah that'll do don't need this with me yet. let's go outside and let's set up another crafting recipe now because I would like some more of these fluid ducts because I'm always running out of those right click that and out we go up we go Oh, by the way, the reason I'm doing these sort of semi-tutorials is because of scrap, which I need for Yu uh, Yu Matter, takes forever, and you can't speed it up very much. It's but it's power dependent, so the more power you've got, the more the faster you can make scrap, and that's it. And we've got a lot of power. I could increase the rate by making more of these, but. Or, yes, by making more lasers and putting lasers on there. Generally, I don't want to do that, because this is actually the, this is the part of the, the pack that's a bit of a drag, really. Anyway, so while I'm while that's going on, we're doing a few other bits and pieces. So what I want to do is to set up an auto-crafting recipe for Emmy Conduit, uh, for Ender Eye Conduit, don't I? So let's look for Ender Eye Conduit. And there it is, the fluid conduit. I'm not using the pressurized fluid conduit. I probably could do. What's the recipe for that? Fuse quartz. And this one is just quiet clear glass. We'll use quiet clear glass and some binding. So I can shift right click this like this. And then I've got the recipe. So I'll basically put, take this out, put the recipe out here, put this into a, one of the molecular assemblers. One, one. I'll put it into that, those will be the ones in. I might put it down here somewhere like this. Let's put it down here. Like that. And then we can craft some more. So come along here, now we want some conduit. And I've got to make about 16 of these. Actually, let's make 24. Because I noticed there wasn't very much binder. So now it's basically, it's got some binder to make conduit binder. I've also got the recipe for that, and I've also got a recipe for the binding, uh, which I can't see at the moment, just control O, the binding composite. So that's all already available, and that'll make uh, 12 of these, it'll make eight, and then we can basically put the glass together. Let's start that, and that'll process, and we'll get some more already done, look at that, really fast as it happens in this case. Let's put that back on, back on again. Now what we're going to do is we're going to let's go downstairs and fill and finish this off. So the east side is going to be the opposite side from the west side, isn't it? So pretty straightforward, really. Let's take this. Uh, I want to put this one over here because it should now be empty. Good. And it doesn't matter with under eye. It's, that's interesting. Let's connect to there. Weird. Why? Ah, because it's an ME cable underneath there. Yeah, that's right. If I take this one here and have a look at this, right click it, turn on that. We should see there's a, yep, yeah, there's an ME cable there just bypassing that that power conduit thing. Turn that off again now. So basically, I don't want them, I don't want that on there. Let's just disable this one. Ah, I have to, see, so I have to right shift roll this one around, and then we should appear that's got the plus mark and it could. So I can right click this and configure this. Let's just disable that one. So it's not connecting from there. And here we doesn't matter, we just input output auto extract. And here we'll put down our other two tanks of liquid silver. Bit too near, move back a bit. And then we can automatically enable this one here. So I'll have it extract and we'll have it always active. So that then fills up this. 
good it's not going down it's just filled up the pipe with the, what we've got at the moment or the conduit so let's go down here now and right click this so what we can then do here is we can come up well as we didn't finish off that sort of part of our problem let's go up here and then connect this up again I find it actually quite disturbing I find the thing now it's not going to come out of here let's enable this as an as extract always active so it's not working until you actually enable this here so it's disabled so now it's importing and that should be all I need I think mode input let's just make it an extract or to extract oh, I've got nothing on there yet have I got the right face oh I haven't got the wrong face ha 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 if I come along here and right click this one uh, can I reach actually maybe I can right click it uh, network details because there's no network there there we go so you can see I've got one bucket of liquid silver on the west side which is where I should have put this in the first place right let's just bash this down here and put it in the right place that was uh, not smart try again let's double put it in the right place huh? put down the two tanks and you can stand on the tanks it's a bit easier then isn't it so, on. so then I can set this to auto extract always active and it's just filling up these two tanks just like that but it hasn't completely filled up the tanks and there's still some stuff in the pipe I think that's an auto extract input output and I need to get this block here that's actually disabled it should be importing in fact to actually get everything maybe that's only works for um so that's got nothing in it now good Maybe if I break it and put it on top of the other one, it gets. It'll take all the all the stuff out of the stuff. Let's have a look. Where's it gone to? No, it's still not. It's still got a little bit in the pipe here. Never mind. We'll deal with that another time. So that's how these compact machines work to a large extent. What I haven't shown you yet is a, basically a very simple. Comp crafting is basically one crafting storage component like this I can also put that in here like this I could put it on the wall it's not relate and that then goes to this sort of pattern shows you that the device is online I can then take a crafting monitor and put it on the front of it like this as long as these are cuboid or not cuboid but rectangular in sort of three dimensions then you will it works so you can have you cannot have an l-shaped or something up here but two or four or six or whatever it works just fine like that so that gives us another storage crafting unit i should have probably enabled this and we'd have seen it work so anyway let's get out of here now because the i oh, see that's now no that's empty now so everything's gone out of there so the last thing we can do with this thing here is to upgrade it so it says oh, let's go back in it says here upgrade you know let's just upgrade that the way you upgrade it is with another star not too cheap I think you simply right click it which yep yeah, now it's upgraded let's check that you see it went white like this now it says it's up it's upgraded yes now what you can also do is you can take a quantum entangler here and simply right click this onto that and it becomes blue so it's activated I think that's all we have to do now we have to go upstairs and build another one of these I find it a bit disturbing they can't see the the rendering so poor at the moment in fact if I remember that, yes I got another spawned block of <laughs> helium don't ask me why all right now what we have to do let's go up here you can't actually see the number of CPUs in here, can we? Which is a bit of a shame. Doesn't matter very much. Let's go back to compact machines in here. And 
we need to make another one of these giant ones because that's a giant one that was made with diamonds like that we need another nether star fortunately I made a few of these in the, in the last episode let's put this down here like that. so if I put this down here like that and then upgrade it like that and if I look at it now with the, the personal shrinking device it should say it's a new machine and it's upgraded press escape I'm holding that upgraded yes what I can now do is I can right click this with a quantum entangler and it should be entangled let's go so it's tell me if I go into this machine now I'm actually in the other machine at the same time so those two machines are now linked which is rather nice isn't it so you have basically got multiple ways to travel around <laughs> cool so you could probably use those as a sort of a very fast way of teleporting around the bases which is pretty awesome that basically concludes this there's, I don't think there's anything else we need to basically do the rest of it is red the only thing I could do is to set up a processing recipe but I've done loads of those in the series so if you want to find the processing recipes this is actually for Bob Joe just look at check the episodes anyway let's go and do something else one thing I would like to do I actually got that from there, the world resizing cube so there must be another world resizing cube in Oh, it's not available that's strange actually that should be available I think I did put it in oh but did I forget to put the crafting card in no I'm sure I did let's just double check that I think that's in this one I've got the pattern ah it hasn't actually quite worked my storage must be a bit full at the moment because this should have come out of here and it would have then have made space for that. I could put that there like that. And there we go. I think that does sort itself out, but it takes a while. I'm not sure if I have to chunk load the inside of these yet. Maybe I do. In which case it's no big deal, because if I press F9, I hope that we don't see any chunk boundaries in here at all. We don't. So we should be able to simply put down a chunk loader. I think we need to chunk load the outside but that's already done because we're in a different dimension and in here I should have a spot loader a spot loader will be just perfect for this because it loads the, the chunk it's in so I'll put it anywhere I like I'll put it in the middle here right click on that because I'm not going to use the underside of this let's get out again right the next thing we're going to do, we'll have a quick look at the base and we'll go and go for a, uh, a dungeon hunt. There we go, I'm turn on the glider. Oops, did I turn on the glider? Yes, it is. Oh, the other thing I did is move the, the heads up display from the Draconian uh, uh, Evolution. That's easy enough to do. You press the button, I pressed, I've done I for my uh, opening up this configuration thing. And you can basically take this now and you press that button. And you can drag it so maybe here's a there's actually one here already and I don't see that coming up let's put it down there it's out of the way as well there's another one here which I haven't seen but let's put it down there and back and I press I and then you can configure the, the HUD elements at the bottom there and that moves it around so anyway let's go off to the factory as you can see I restarted the server and it takes a while before everything gets loaded up properly I haven't done much in the factory since last episode that I can remember I was actually spent a lot of time going around dungeons and dungeons are still worth doing even though you can't compress iridium shards anymore because you do actually get occasional iridium I think I might have done this 64k crafting storage I upgraded that I put two more uh, CPUs on here which gives it a reasonably good capacity 320 and then I've got some more co-processors which basically spreads the jobs out to different 
uh, processors or crafting units like that. So that's quite good. I don't know whether or not I'd moved these last time or not. I basically built another CSU device so I can basically charge up this fairly quickly. This one, this one goes up really fast actually because the output of this is uh, 120 EU per tick, 128 EU per tick. So it recharges at double speed or four times faster than the other one. And I don't think I've done anything else between episodes. That that was done before, I think. Anyway, I won't waste time with that. Let's go on, get on with doing the, the hunt. What time of day is it? It's daytime. It doesn't matter for the sake, because I've got so much. The armor's so strong, it's no big deal. I've got plenty of oxygen. So what I do is I've got the glider. So I'll look on here. I've basically got jump boost on this one, jump three. I could do flippers, but there's no water around, so it's not much point in doing that one. And this one has got uh, the glider on it. If I look glider on here. Okay. So what basically I'm going to do is press J on the map here and have a look. Now dungeons are fairly easy to see. So let's go, there's one for example here. I probably visited this dungeon yesterday and I think I forgot to mark it. So let's just put a marker on that one there. I think I can do it by double clicking a marker. Yeah, let's do that. And that will do. Does it need, oh, it needs a Y coordinate. Let's make 26 because that seems to be the base of that. And save that. And you can see dungeons are fairly straightforward. If I turn them off, go to the waypoints here and turn off the dungeons all on, turn them all off. Go close that. You can see they always look like this on your map. Where have they gone to? There must have been one or two up here. There's another one there, for example. And another one here. They all look like that. There's that one here. So let's go down and see if we can find another one just below the base here. So let's which direction is that? Where am I? Okay, so I want to basically turn 90 degrees that way. I think that'll be doing. Yeah. Okay. Let's press the base. So I just jump up with my and then activate the glider and just press W. Oops, I haven't activated the glider, have I? And you just float along like this. And we go up. As soon as we hit the space, just hold space and you go up. And that's where the quarry was. As you can see, it's coming, rendering itself slowly. But I tend to use the minimap as much as anything else to when I'm traveling. That looks like that could be a dungeon over here, but it isn't. That's just a hole. It is not round enough. And there you are, that's that one. Let's go back over here. Now we're coming back to terrain I haven't been covered yet because there's no map. There's a lot of mobs just there. That's strange. So I just basically use the mini map. And as we as you you can see them fairly they become fairly obvious when you see one. There's none there. I'm going to go around these blocks in and I reckon it'll take about two or three minutes before we find one. Go down south. And as soon as I get near to the ground I press the space hold the space bar down. I don't need to worry about lava or anything like that because I'm on the moon. And they're fairly random the, the locations of them of the dungeons. Yeah, there we go. There we go, there's one. Turn off the glider. Let's just go down here. Make sure we've got the sword in the hand. Because there's usually mobs around here at the beginning. So in fact what's best thing to use the there are our pickaxe, we can put one of those down there, and one of those down there, that, that's basically it. Let me just go around here. Let's 
one. Turn the R pickaxe back on again, and let's get that one there lit up. Let's get rid of this one. The reason I'm using the R pickaxe is I actually can repair the R pickaxe. Just holding shift on the right hand side here when I'm doing that. Oh, wrong way. Oh, uh, yes, that's definitely the wrong way. I missed that. Oops. You walk into the light sometimes as well. Strange. So there's usually one on the right hand side here like that. It's just zombies. The other one will be spiders over there. Get rid of these. I'm getting shut up a skeleton. Let's just light it up and get rid of the skeleton. Well, that's a bit disappointing. No chests in this particular one. I'll quickly go and sort him out. Where's he gone to? <laughs> he throws you on lot others. I'm missing him. Seem to be missing him for some reason or other. Right, got back to the ground. Oh, he's dead already. Good. Right, and he gives me the key. Let's put the key in here. You always get a yellow heart, which is a bit of a shame because there's no use for that. And that's down through here. Let's put the torches back in. Take the key out. Open the box. See what we got. See, we've got three already more, so that's well worth doing in this particular one. There's much about those. I've got a moon buggy. Oh, and that's a rocket too. Basically, just take everything. That's it. So, that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Learned something new, and I'll see you next time. So, until then, bye for now. <laughs>